A few weeks ago, I participated in Bracky's 2023 Game Jam. In this video, I'm gonna go through the entire development process and show you exactly what I did to turn this into this in just seven days. A Game Jam is typically a timed competition where under a set time limit, you have to make a video game. They usually have specified restrictions, such as a set theme or a required set of technologies to be used. For this jam, all that was required was that it was to be made within a seven day time period. And I decided to use Unity. The theme this year was an end is a new beginning. And it took quite a long time before I started even getting any ideas. A lot of them were focused around roguelike concepts, but I thought that this would be the most common thought. And there was a lot of competition there. With a lot of these jams, you don't have to take the theme too literally. So I was thinking in more general terms. And after some brainstorming, I came to the conclusion that an apocalypse is an end with a new beginning. But that's kind of where my idea stopped. I wanted to make a PS1 or retro inspired game and a heavily pixelated art style. After looking through some of my previously started projects, I found a game I had been working on a few months prior. That was a grid based game. I'd written this very generic grid system that I thought I could utilize in some way. I kind of landed on the puzzle genre. There are a lot of puzzles that rely on grids and they are a lot easier to design for. Making a puzzle that is restrained within a grid is a lot easier than making a fun fluid puzzle in a large open level. So I decided the game was gonna function like this. You would have a starting time map. Placed on this time map would be old, decrepit, post-apocalyptic buildings and high rises. And with the theme, the end is a new beginning, I wanted the gameplay to show new civilizations rising from the ashes of old. So I decided that the whole game was gonna be about replacing the old structures with new ones. Before we start development, I just wanna say, please consider liking and subscribing. I have been putting a lot of effort into these YouTube videos and I wanna continue doing this for as long as possible. So if you like the video, like it. If you want to see more of these videos, subscribe. If nothing else, let's continue with this video. With the design in place, I decided to jump right into development. The first thing I started working on is the grid system. As soon as I was able to generate a basic grid, I just started working on grid interactions. I wanted the player to be able to click to select a tile in the grid and simply have some sort of interaction happen. My initial implementation of this was simply changing the color of the selected tile. After having finished the interaction system, I moved on to tile types. I wanted to have multiple different tile types that could be visually distinct and have different kinds of functions throughout the game to make a more varied gameplay experience. To add some more visual variety to the game, I started by adding some tile decorations, such as grass, trees, and rocks. At this point, I was pretty happy with the tile map implementation and the grid generation. So I decided to move on to level loading. I wanted to create a custom data type to hold the designed level. I decided to use Unity's scriptable objects to hold the level data. This was in general pretty easy to implement and I had it running fairly shortly after. At this point, I had a pretty complete version of the grid system done. So I started to move on to the building system. The first implementation of the system simply allowed the player to place a building in place of the decoration and the player is only able to place buildings on specific buildable tiles. At this point, I was pretty happy with the building system. So I moved on to working on some more interactions with the tiles. Given a set of coordinates, I wanted to get that tiles neighboring tiles. This was pretty easy to implement, and then I quickly integrated that with the building system. Once a building has been placed, I select the neighboring tiles of the built on tile and change the color of them. After having gotten the basic neighboring tile function working, I moved on to getting a more advanced pattern working. I wanted to get the entire row or column of a specific tile and destroy that when a building is placed. That wasn't too hard and I quickly got that working. When a building is placed, other buildings within its destruction zone following a set pattern is destroyed. And to make this easier to understand, I added a UI element in the top right corner to display the up and coming pattern that is going to be destroyed once you build the next building. After working on systems for quite a while, I wanted to move over to doing some graphical changes. The first thing I added was a custom skybox. Next, I added a particle system that was shooting out large cloud particles that would slowly move behind the grid system. And for some final polishing touches, I added pixelated textures to all of the tiles, decorations, and buildings. 
With the visual changes implemented, I wanted to move on to gameplay again. I wanted the game's game loop done as soon as possible, so I could start focusing on more polish and not have to worry about having a unfinished game at the end of the jam. So I immediately began working on a win condition. The player is able to win when all of the post-apocalyptic buildings have been destroyed, while all of their own buildings have been placed and none of their old buildings have been destroyed. I also added a restart pop-up that is displayed when the player loses a level. This was so I could quickly restart the level and was very easy to implement. At this point, with the general game loop almost finished, I jumped back to doing some game feel work. I decided to add some camera shake when you are placing a new building. I then added a few particle systems to the building as well. I wanted some dust and rock particles to shoot out when you place a new building. I also decided to shake the tile itself, just making sure to precisely show exactly which tile you clicked on. To add a further level of difficulty to the game, I added some parameters that some buildings are required to have before they can be placed onto the grid. Some buildings have to be placed next to a forest or a lake or even a mountain. So I added some new icons to show what the next building require to be placed. These items were placed underneath the pattern UI. Then to show the player what they're actually about to place, I decided to add a spinning pre-rendered version of each tile before it is being placed. This is just to give a little heads up of what you can expect once you click on the grid again. I wanted to be overly obvious with what was happening in the game. So I added a hovering indicator over each tile that activates when you hover your mouse over it. This is just to show which tile you're placing your building on and which tiles are going to be destroyed next to it in a slightly fainter indicator. I also added an X that shows if you're able to play place a building there or not. Yet again, just to be overly obvious with the player. At this point, I was kind of beginning to wrap up the game. I started to work some more auxiliary systems. I wanted to have a nice set of transitions in between scenes and while reloading the game. So I used a tutorial from the man himself, Brackies, to create a simple scene transition system using a simple circle wipe. This was fairly simple and didn't take too much time and was able to just add a little bit of more depth to this game. Then I jumped over and added a distinct restart button so that you could restart the level at any point. You didn't have to lose before restarting because sometimes you're gonna make a mistake before you are done and that is super understandable. So I wanted to give the player that option. I also added a non-functioning settings button that was not yet implemented. At this point, I was pretty happy with the general state of the game. It was playable, but it was pretty hard to understand for anybody new. I did some playtesting with my brother and it was pretty hard to understand what to do and when. So I decided to do something I've never done before. I was going to make a tutorial and I wanted to make a comprehensive tutorial that is played in the beginning, just going through every step of the process to show how you place buildings, what they do when you place them and how to win a level. And to be honest, this was easier than I thought, but it was also a very simple tutorial. And now that the jam was wrapping up, I had a little time lapse. So I wanted to add the final sound effects and ambient sound to the game. So I decided to add some wind noises and some birds in the background. I also added a big crunchy construction effect that was played whenever you place a new building. As soon as all of the sound effects were done, I moved on to creating the content for the game. I thought that I didn't need to create too much content since people rarely play a game jam game more than a few minutes. So I decided on five levels, but it was just enough for such a small game jam game. And even with my little to no puzzle design experience, I was pretty happy with the difficulty curve. I think I achieved a pretty good balance, even with my little experience. And as a final addition, I added a real pause menu with a functioning set of audio options. These were quick to implement, but added just the final touch before the game was completely finished. Now, what would I change about the game? For a game gym game, I achieved a lot. There are some polishing things I could change. There are some quality of life things I could change. A lot of people also thought that the icons were not very well explained and they weren't highlighted enough. But to be honest, I'm really happy with how this ended up. And I am happy to say that I'm going to participate in many more game jams throughout the year. And I want to do as many as possible specifically in person. Now for the game jam, my game placed 100 
out of 750 submissions. And if you want to play it yourself, you can find it on my itch.io page. I've linked it in the description or in the pinned comment. You can play it in the browser. It's really easy. No downloads required. Like the video if you liked it. If nothing else, bye.